Hey YouTube, thanks for tuning in to check out part four of my DIY portable solar generator series. Uh, it's late November here in western New York and that means it's off boating season and a great time to make some upgrades to my system and share those results with you. I want to thank all of you for your comments. Uh, some of the comments you've left have inspired me to make some of the changes you're going to see today. First, I know a number of you have concerns that there's no wheels on this system. And to show you what can be done to solve that problem, I have a um, very inexpensive $12 $12 movers dolly that I purchased from Harbor Freight. It almost perfectly fits this system. It's plastic, great match, allows for this to be maneuvered around if that's your goal or desire. Uh, some folks have asked about how this system is connected to my solar panel considering that I've got SAE ports. And what I'll show you is that yes indeed I have MC4 connections on one end of my solar cable and I, I added and spliced on a SAE port uh, connection on the other end. I would not recommend you do that. Uh, there are better ways to do this. I've since learned since I made my system that there is actually an MC4 input plate that's available. I'd highly recommend you consider that. Let's turn this on and I'll show you one of the things I've done in the interest of improving the energy efficiency of this system. And it has to do with fans and cooling management. When I turn this on, you'll notice that the temperature gauge reads 74.4 degrees and the cooling fans on off switch is indicating it's on however the fans are not on and that's because what I have installed is a snap disc style thermostat fan switch let's show you where that's located and how it works I'm going to simply remove the top tray set that aside what I can show you is that I've installed near the top of the case this snap disc style fan switch. It's set to come on at about 95 to 105 degrees and will go off between 75 and 85 degrees and that will automatically control the fans saving energy. Let's show you how that works. Simply going to use a hair dryer to heat it up. You'll notice the temperature is coming up quite quickly and in just a moment those fans should kick on which they just did. So they'll start cooling down and again when they reach approximately 80 degrees those fans will turn off automatically. One of the things I want to show you that I have done to this system in the interest of approving its safety is take care of some cable management. These two large two gauge diameter jumpers between the batteries were initially crossed over. First I'd recommend that you simply buy shorter lengths or make shorter lengths but if they run a little bit long, keep them separated, don't cross them over in the interest of safety. What I have purchased is six cable connection clamps and they look like this. They are relatively inexpensive. Uh, basically they are plastic clamps that you can attach around the cable. They have adhesive backing so that when you pair them up they will keep separate those cables and make sure that you don't have any possibility of a short. So again I want to thank all of our viewers uh, for providing suggestions for first and foremost safety that's always important and uh, one of you put a comment in about putting in a snap disc style thermostat to manage these fans and that's working out very well. Now, for those of you who had concerns about portability of course you can work up any type of system you like for moving the system around but one of these movers dollies from Harbor Freight works out perfectly well. So again thanks for all of you who have viewed my system. Thanks for your continued support and if you're working on your own projects I hope these updates continue to inspire you to build the best system possible.